What's up, gang? Carolina Jackpot coming at you March 14th, 2023. Today was the first day of uh, spring practice for uh, the Gamecocks. Uh, Shane Beamer had the team out there early this morning uh, going at it, and um, he had a press conference afterwards, which he uh, he started off with the uh, the usual little jabs at the uh, at the media that he likes to do, uh, tell them that uh, that. Uh, I know you guys are trying to guess who the ones and twos are going to be. And I saw you pulling your phones out and start tweeting your buddies and start tweeting uh, different stuff out when you saw who the uh, first group was that we ran out there. <clears throat> funny stuff. Funny guy. Um, <coughs> and it doesn't feel like offensively every year when we go into spring practice, uh, the game's hot. Ugh, the game sucks. Who is that? The game cocks have... Uh, have some knowns and some unknowns. And uh, it's, you know, it's kind of frustrating at times. Uh, of course, going into last year, I mean, we were unknowns or quarterback, wide receiver, and your knowns or kind of your running back, your offensive line, your tight ends. This year, that has totally flip-flopped. Uh, our unknowns, our offensive line, running back especially, uh, and tight end uh, to a degree. Whereas quarterback, wide receiver uh, is, is pretty much a known. Uh, I mean, Spencer Rattler will be the starting quarterback, barring any unforeseen circumstances, such as injury uh, or you know, he just up and runs away or something uh, of that nature. <laughs> and we've got some playmaking wide receivers finally there. Then Juice Wells, Xavier Leggett, uh, Amirian Brown is a player that came on uh, last year and did some good things. Um, <clears throat> Offensive line, South Carolina's going to have to rebuild a little bit there. Lost some kids to graduation. They've, uh, you know, apparently been working on a plan uh, to fix these holes and uh, have been recruiting pretty well there at those positions. Of course, uh, the big five-star signee uh, from Dorman High School, big Marky Anderson, uh, the uh, a number one overall player in the state, I believe, um, in the uh, 2023 class. Uh, kid already on campus, um, so I, I mean I don't know. I mean could be a could be a, uh, a a year one starter. You don't see that very often on uh, the offensive line, but with some of the attrition and uh, his high uh, star ranking, I would at least see him get significant playing times and rotation in that offensive line, if not uh, be a starter uh, at some point during the season. Uh, tight end wise, you know, uh, South Carolina's had lost Jaheim Bell, uh, Austin Stogner, uh, the kid that transferred from Oklahoma, transferred back. Uh, why the hell you transferred out here in the first place? I don't know if you look go back. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the uh, former offensive line coach, Nate Atkins' son, Greg Atkins, um, who uh, was out of eligibility. So pretty thin there. Trey Knox come in from uh, Arkansas. He's had some decent numbers there. Battled some injury problems. We'll see uh, how that goes. Um, I, I, I'm of, in the camp that those positions will be fine. Um, in fact, I think they could be better than fine. Um, running back wise, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. And then Beamer today was talking. Uh, apparently, uh, DeCarion Joyner uh, was working with the uh, running back some today during spring practice. And look, I mean, no offense here, but this guy's been all over the field. Uh, could we just leave him at one position? And I know he's he's a Swiss Army knife type player that uh, you know can help out in a, a plethora of places in a pinch. But I mean, when they lined this guy up at quarterback in the Wildcat, and you knew what was coming. I mean, he gained uh, negative zero yards, and that's what's normally happened. Uh, he he's not a running back. I, I don't think that he's going to be physical uh, at the line of scrimmage. Um, he he's not a Jaheim Bell. I think that he uh, probably is faster than Jaheim Bell, but he's not he's he's not as as athletic at the line of scrimmage as a Jaheim Bell. Now in space, yes, uh, but no, I, I don't think you're going to be able to fill him in there at running back. And I don't think that that's something that they're working on for the long term. You know, maybe some kind of wrinkle they were planning on throwing in there. Um, you know, I'm interested to see how uh, Mario Anderson Jr., uh, the transfer from Newberry College uh, in Division II, pans out. 
uh, in the spring and see what uh, comes of this guy. Uh, he's a, uh, a in two years, I mean, he has some extremely eye-popping numbers. At Newberry, um, you know, rush for, you know, over 1,500 yards both years, um, double-digit touchdowns both years. I mean, the guy is, uh, I mean, he and he came from nothing, really. I mean, he came from, uh, was a, he's uh, from Stratford High uh, in Goose Creek. Um, I, think, I think he was really even really recruited by anybody. Uh, maybe got had a little trouble in high school with Justin and, you know, maybe got into a little little trouble himself there. Um, but, you know, he's he has made a comeback and uh, I've watched some videos on him and uh, according to like his teachers and, and coaches down there at Newberry, he's you know just an excellent young man, high character, um, you know, leader on the team. So it'll be interesting to see what he can bring to the table. Uh, sometimes these skill type players do very well when you get them from a, a lower level school. Uh, you know, just working behind an SEC offensive line. Um, could be, uh, you know, what this guy needs. I, now, I mean, he, he it, it may end up that he just doesn't have SEC speed. He may not have the SEC moves. He may not be uh, able to adapt to uh, life in the SEC, and he may just be a, 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 a backup uh, player, like a, a second, third stringer. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Juju McDowell, the other kid that's there, I believe this is his third year. Yeah, it's his third year. <laughs> Juju McDowell, he's like a he's like a five nine, one hundred and eighty pound running back, a little guy, which is is great. I mean, if you're the fastest guy on the field, but I mean, he ain't, um, and he's not. He's also another one who's just not physical enough to handle the pounding of being, you know, uh, an every down back or an every series back. Um, he, he's good for a change of pace, I think, every so often to keep a defense honest. But uh, generally speaking, I, I don't think that that's who you're uh, who you're going to be rolling with a starter um, in the backfield. So South Carolina hopefully is really, really going to hit the transfer portal here in the second period um, between April to, to May when you can get back in the portal again. And maybe sign one to two guys. Uh, that's why I'm hearing. I, I, now I have no idea uh, who those individuals may be. There are so many people in the. I mean, there are like literally a couple of thousand kids. I think in the transfer portal. I mean, it's really a really high, astronomically high number. Now, and I see it may even be more like four or five. Thousand. It's it's ridiculous how many there are. I just averaged out in my head. I said, man, it's like fifty a school. That can't be right. So. Somebody in the comment section below, tell me how many people's in the transfer portal. And that may be combining, you know, um, FCS, FBS, Division One, and Two and Three. But uh, still, it was a, a very high number um, of people in the transfer portal. So hopefully, they're able to get someone from out of there if they think that's what they need to do. Um, defensively, uh, you know, uh, defensive end, especially. Going to be kind of a position of concern. Um, Beaver did say the, the, the players like Mo Caba um, and uh, Jordan Strawn, who's a, a defensive end. The kids have been injured uh, ever since uh, way back earlier in the season last year. Uh, probably not going to have any kind of contact during spring practice. Um, and that, honestly, is probably a very smart thing to do. The thing very very encouraging as well. I mean, there have there are no injuries right now to report. No more in, new injuries to report. No new injuries popping up right now, and and that's a testament to I think the uh, strength and conditioning program there. That uh, what Luke Day and his staff are uh, are putting together for the Gamecocks. You know, under Will Muschamp, we constantly saw these soft tissue injuries, and it just seemed like every time you turn around, somebody was hurt. Um, you know, we're missing four or five players and, and not that we haven't had injuries, uh, under Shane Beamer and his, his staff, but, uh, to me, it just seems like a, a lot less and just more, just in a more positive direction, uh, in that aspect of the game. So, uh, kudos to those guys. Um, I mean, just looking forward to the season. We know special teams will be a strength for South Carolina again. The punting and kicking is, uh, is going to be a strength for them. Um, 
you know, interested to see, you know, who they're going to have back there in the return game this year. Uh, interested to see what kind of new uh, new wrinkles special teams guru Pete Limbo uh, is throwing in there. Who, in my opinion, uh, may be, uh, well, there's no doubt to maybe. He, he is the most uh, valuable coach uh, besides Beamer himself on that coaching staff. And that includes uh, uh, both coordinators. I mean, just hands down, they are. Um, you know, new new offensive line coach taking over this year, Lonnie Teasley, uh, the former um, offensive line coach, Greg Atkins. Uh, his son's name was Nate Atkins. I think I called him Greg a while ago. Nate At or Greg Atkins, uh, you know, some health issues. He kind of had to hang it up. Uh, he's still going to remain around, according to Beamer, in an analyst role. Uh, Shane Beamer, you know, he's – He's really high on, on Greg Atkins. He, he called him, uh, you know, a, a great mind and uh, one of the best offensive line coaches in the country. If you saw the product that was put on the field, um, not so much last year, but especially in 2021, uh, behind uh, an offensive line that had in 2020 paved the road for uh, a thousand yard rusher, Kevin Harris, to lead the SEC uh, in rushing. And I don't give a damn, it was during the COVID year um, that that nobody played defense well somebody had to be the leading rusher right i mean you didn't go out there and just get those yards by himself if you saw that offensive line play and then called greg atkins one of the best offensive line coaches in the country um i i think there would be a lot of disagreement there with shane beamer shane beamer seems to be kind of high on people that he's close to and that he's friends with and I mean, loyalty to your friends is is one thing, but uh, you know, there comes a, a time where you're, you know, it, has Shane Beamer mastered yet the uh, the businessman and the um, I, I guess we should say uh, program manager part of uh, being a head coach yet, and been able to separate friendship from uh, what's reality. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so i mean i think he probably had or i think he probably had a real hard time with the marcus satterfield situation last year as well of course we know um guy uh, worst offensive coordinator in the country uh, if there was one worse I, I don't know who it was uh and um his contract kind of expired i don't think he was ever really officially let go um, I, or maybe he was behind closed doors. He was just kind of not retained. Uh, and he went to Nebraska um, to be Matt Rule's offensive coordinator. Matt Rule is supposedly a great offensive mind. Um, I think Marcus Satterfield is just there holding a position, holding a place spot, because they have to have an offensive coordinator. I think Matt Rule himself is going to be the offensive coordinator at Nebraska. Uh, so I just my two cents about that. Um, Shane Bimber also talked about uh, not settling, you know, kind of uh, personal accountability and, um, you know, just, you know, team goals. And that, and to me, that's, that's really important. That's huge. Uh, and that's one of the things I do like about him uh, as opposed to um, a, a Will Muschamp. Um, if for, you know, some reason, you know, South Carolina, either has a rash of injuries or, or just doesn't play very well or, you know, the, the players can't gel together and never get the running back situation figured out or the tight end situation figured out. And South Carolina goes five and seven this year or, or, or four and eight or some other godforsaken number. I don't think <coughs> that you'll see Shane Beamer doing the things like Will Muschamp did during his press conferences where – you know, he, he, he would just get mad and, and clam up and say, well, you know, the first three years, my staff was it was here. We were here. We, were, we won the most games ever. Nobody cares about that. Okay, and We only care about this year and your team sucks. <laughs> That's uh, uh, kind of the, the stuff that, uh, you know, I don't think that we're going to see from Shane Beamer. Now, I, you know, he has been a little bit immature, in my opinion, in some of his press conferences over the past couple of years. Um, he's gotten a little bit hot uh, at point in time, and which, yeah, when, you know, when you're getting roasted by the media and you're under a little bit of pressure, I mean, it, it's understandable why one would do that, but also you're in a position where you really can't do that. Um, I, I like it that he gives it back to him because it's cool. 
and and, it, and it's funny and um it, it's all that stuff but at the same time it's just things that you don't do it's things that you don't do you don't see um you don't see kirby smart doing that uh, you don't see um insert um higher level higher winning percentage coach here you don't see ryan day doing that um well he he cries a little bit but um at any rate just glad to be here and uh talking about football again uh, it's it's, uh, it's football's not back i mean by any means but we are um you know on the field um <laughs> you know getting gonna be putting some pads on next week i'm sure uh, popping around a little bit and uh, we'll see who emerges there and um, you know, I'm sure they'll come out of, of spring of course with a uh, with a two deep kind of drawn up uh, spring game I believe this year is going to be at nighttime again which you know is, is a great deal you now Carolina Jackpot may get down to a spring game again this year I don't know uh, it's been a good while since I've actually been to one um, so we'll see how that goes but at any rate guys i uh, hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit it with a thumbs up uh subscribe to the carolina jackpot channel if you're not subscribed already uh, college football content here all year long uh and it's often quite entertaining and uh live shows every sunday and wednesday night live call-in shows so i will see you guys later i appreciate it thanks for watching peace and i'm out of here and uh Go Gamecocks. Oh, yeah. And, um... Go Coach Beamer. Ah, ah, ah. Woo! See what was behind me there. I was kind of... Yeah. I'll see y'all later. Peace. I'm out.